So um, what we're going to talk about is a software package called OpenCore which uses a standard called Salomel that we're using for all models that are to do with ODEs and algebraic equations. So anything that any model that you can represent it with as a lumped parameter or, or a, a homogeneously mixed compartment where you're describing everything that's going on in terms of different ordinary differential equations, not partial differential equations. So anything to do with spatial is not within the spatial change is not within the scope of this. This is just ODEs and algebraic. Um, and so we've developed this markup language, XML markup language called Salomel, which we'll talk a little bit about, and then the, the software program that implements the models and solves them is, is called OpenCore. Um, but I thought I'd give you a very brief background to that and then we'll, we'll get on and make sure you can run it um, and then go through a simple model that you can try out solving a simple model and we'll then get you onto a tutorial that goes through more complex models. So the history here, just for interest, is that in 1997, quite a long time ago now, 20 years, um, the IUPS is the International Union of Physiological Sciences, so that's the, the umbrella body um, that deals with physiology, all physiological societies around the world, so it acts as a coordinating body for physiology. And they realised that computation was going to be very important to physiology, so they wanted to begin a process of, of bringing in more computational expertise into the world of physiology. So they formed a committee called the Physiome Committee that they asked me to chair, and the first thing we did was to begin to develop standards for how you encode models in a standard form to guarantee the reproducibility. Because if you're going to eventually use models as part of, say, drug discovery, um, with, F with the FDA or with workflows with healthcare applications, um, you need to be able to be really sure that the model is reproducible, that somebody other than the person who wrote the model can run it and get the same results. So there's been quite a big effort to try and make sure we've got a, a robust framework. Um, and part of that is, um, as you'll see in a minute, part of it is making sure the model is got consistent units. So for example, if you write a model and, and you're accidentally mixing up your units in the terms of an equation, then you're going to get out nonsense. So one of the things you can do is to have well a process for defining units and then being able to check automatically that your equations are consistent in units. Another thing you could do is to make sure that you're satisfying certain under underpinning biophysical equations. So if you want to make sure you're conserving charge, for example, um, then you can, the, the framework would allow the application of, of um, checking against those biophysical principles. That's something we're working on at the moment. And then the other thing is that if you write an equation and you say this is x in my equation, and I've got an equation that says dx dt equals something, then generally you want to assign a meaning to x and you call that annotation. So you're saying I'm going to make x be the concentration of calcium in the cytosol of the cardiac cell in the ventricle of the heart, for example, or whatever it is. So you've got to be able to assign your mathematical statement, AX or whatever you call it, um, you've got to be able to say what it means both physically and what it means biologically. So we'll come to that. So what, um, what happened then was we began the development of of Salomel for ordinary differential equations and we also at the same time began the development of FieldML for spatial variation. Um, the systems biology community also started an initiative about shortly after called the systems biology markup language and Salomel and SBML now are the two are the two languages that are pretty widely used in the um, in the biological modeling domain. Um, and then various other 
so the U US kicked in with a, an IMAG program that involved all of these institutes, NIH, NSF, etc., to, to contribute to the development of the physiome concept. So physiome being the use of um, quantitative methods behind understanding physiological function, um, and particularly trying to link. I mean, one of the interesting things about um, bioengineering or physiology is the fact that you often make measurements at the the whole body level, like an MRI or a CT, or some sort of diagnostic process where you're looking at the physiology of the body, but the actual disease that you're trying to examine or understand is happening at a molecular level. So you've got this huge problem of how do you connect molecular level behaviour to whole body behaviour, and that require if you're going to do that on a very quantitative basis, you've got to have models that can then link across scales from molecular to whole body. And so the Physium project is, is what is trying to do that and, and create the infrastructure to do that. The Europeans got into the project in 2006 with a, <coughs> um, a report called the Strategy for European Physium Step, and that then kicked off a whole lot of funding um, into the Physium under Framework 7 of the European Commission. And in various other ones, the German government um, contributed via something called the Virtual Liver Network. There's been a recent um, development called AVCENA, which is a, um, an initiative to bring all of these modelling frameworks closer to in silico clinical trial, or closer to drug discovery with in silico clinical trials, so that the drug companies were involved and co-funded by the European Commission. Um, and we also have something called the VPH Institute now, which is a, um, a European base, but acting globally um, to coordinate a lot of the activities around, the, particularly the European, but, but also helping globally in relation to the physio. So here's the three things that, that we really want to go over today, because um, as well as having a, a modelling standard, um, and Salomel deals with the model. CDML is a standard that's been developed by both the Salomel group, which is mainly based here, and the SBML, the Systems Biology group, to really define how you do a simulation. So this is only talking about a model, what the mathematics is in the model. This says what, al what numerical solution process are you going to use to solve the model, um, and what are you going to output? What are the graphs going to be that you output? Uh, so this is a, a more general framework that calls this for the for the statement of the model, and it might call several Salomel models. And and so this one is um, also being used, and we'll talk about that as part of Open Core. And I think the the important point here is that when you have a standard, it's not much use unless you have a simulation environment to solve the models with and to create the models. But equally important is the fact that you need a model repository so that as people create models of various sorts you can upload them to a repository and then you can easily interact between the simulation environment and the repository. So there's about 600 models publicly available, exposed models of biological function on the repository um, and then a, a a whole lot more that are in workspaces where people are developing new models but not yet converted them to a public exposure. And those those are all accessible, some through password but still in a workspace, um, but most in the just openly available and you can use Open Core to access those models. Um, and so we, we want to make sure that you're not only able to run models and play you know play around with them, change parameters and see how they work here but also that you can retrieve models from the repository. Um, so we should, we'll go through that. Um, and so the, the main websites that you want to look at around this are this one here called salomel.org, um, which gives you, if you go here, you'll see that repository of models, but you can see a number of tools developed there. And every year there's a, um, a workshop held for Salomel, um, organised by Andre, and this year it was in combination with a, 
Harmony, which is a meeting that brings all the systems biology people as well. So we had both meetings down here, um, and it was the 10th, 10th uh, meeting of the Salamal community. So those are held annually. The Salamal one's held annually in Auckland, but these ones are held in different places around the world with Harmony. Um, and it's quite interesting just looking through this website because you can <coughs> you can get a bit of background on how it all got going, who the community is, and you can go in and have a look at the specs around the standard if you want. Um, but the main <coughs> the main thing really is going to the models part to be able to download and use the models. Okay, so what what you should have you where are we at in terms of you downloading? Open call. Okay. And then if you go to the help page, I'll open it. Um, 